21 when I started there. <laughs> my uncle worked here and he actually got me the job. <laughs> he needed some help in the casting room. So I started out as a, uh, as a helper in the casting room. And then I saw my friend Clem Hull throw on the potter's wheel and uh, looked like magic to me to see that clay move. And I thought, well, I'd like to do that. So I started learning to throw. Then before the summer was over, I was demonstrating for the tourist. I uh, went to work for Mr. Lewis. And when I first came to work, I came in blue jeans and a t-shirt, and that was the wrong thing. He told uh, my supervisor, who was Clem Hall, to tell that kid to wear a shirt tomorrow. We don't run around Van Briggle in our underwear. So <laughs> Clem Hall came to work here in 1946. He, he wasn't a ceramic engineer, he didn't have a degree, but he called himself a ceramist. He knew as much as anybody. And Mr. Lewis was very strict. He hated blue jeans so bad that he went and started furnishing uniforms for the men. <laughs> so we all had uniforms from then on. <laughs> well, my dad started here in 1970 when he got out of the Air Force. He was a military engineer, came back from a year in Vietnam. In those days, the budget was really tight. It was ridiculously tight here. All the roofs leaked. It was, they had very little money for maintenance. He was talking to the contractor. He said, ah, oh, Jim, let me bring in my bulldozers. We'll level this and we'll, we'll build you something new and nice. And Dad was saying, no, no, Ed, just give me, give me six months and let me show you what we can do with it. This was our first job, was the Van Briggle here. Restoration work was always a very interesting for me and because sometimes I could figure out how they did things in the old days. No power tools, this was their hands, hand tools, chisels, hammers. I guess I could still be working there if I wasn't so darn old, George. <laughs> Included in one of the premier collections that we hold is our Van Briggle collection, um, which has been a major part of the institution uh, for most of the 20th century. The Van Briggle collection includes about 700 items, uh, both uh, ceramic and paintings. Van Briggle art pottery is collected all over the world and really is one of the most recognizable names that's attached to the Pikes Peak region. You can go to Germany and visit a museum in Germany and you quite likely to find Van Briggle. So it's, it's a world-renowned um, collection. Anne Van Briggle was a gifted artist in her own right. She met artists in Paris where they were both studying art. She was from upstate New York and she comes to Colorado Springs and at this time, um, shortly after he arrives. When artist Van Briggle came to Colorado Springs, he came to hopefully recover from tuberculosis. He was one of many thousands of people that came to Colorado Springs for that very purpose. And they are married in Cheyenne Canyon. When they open their company, their pottery business, on North Nevada, people of the community step up to sponsor him, provide money so that they can open this business. And it's a flourishing business, but Artis's health does not improve. And on July 4th, 1904, five years after arriving here, um, Artis has died. And he and Anne have only been married several years. We see Van Briggle in context with a, a much larger story. And it's a story that's very important to um, understanding uh, this place, this unique place. Why was the pottery built? The uh, pottery up on Nevada Avenue wouldn't meet the demand, and, uh, and it was very inefficient. The neighbors are complaining about the smoke. Um, it's one single chimney and the black smoke hanging over the Victorian homes of that time is not appreciated. And she comes up with the idea of opening up memorial pottery in building in his honor that would still be 
the ongoing business, but also a tribute to her husband, Artis. And William Palmer donates the land. The building was designed in a Flemish Dutch design. Van Bruegel had a Flemish or Dutch ancestry, and so that made a pretty good fit. And she hires Nicholas Vanden Aaron, who they had met in Paris, and he's in Colorado Springs because his wife has TB. He designs this marvelous pottery building that looks like a Dutch farmhouse. It has Flemish brick design. It has tiles on the outside. At the time, the cost to build the memorial pottery was only fifty thousand dollars. You know, in in 1908 dollars, that was probably a fairly good investment. Started in, in about 1955. I made 62 and a half cents an hour to start, and the first raise I got was two and a half cents an hour. <laughs> I, I was rich. I think my first paycheck, uh, take home pay was $21. I was living with my sister. I gave her $7 for room and board. And believe it or not, that $7 fed the four of us for a week. <laughs> Frank Riddle designed the kilns so that they burned real clean in General Palmer's Monument Valley Park. He was a very, very sharp engineer. Too bad Van Briggle pottery couldn't have kept him a little longer. He was here for a couple of years before he went on to bigger industrial type of uh, factories in Ohio. There was a terrible fire in the late teens that destroyed parts of the building. It was from a kiln. Luckily, the, the foreman showed up before they sprayed water on the, the red hot, white hot bricks. And I guess they would have exploded, maybe killed the firemen, maybe blown up the building. And then in 1935, as old timers in Colorado Springs can tell you from their parents, there was a terrible flood when Monument Creek overflowed. It was Memorial Day, and the whole eastern portion of the Memorial Pottery Building was destroyed. So this was the river that damaged the building? Yes, in 1935. You can see the building that was removed because of structural damage during the flood and there was a wall between the building and the uh, monument shed that was destroyed in the 1935 flood. So this photo has to be before the 1935 flood. We in Manitou have had a lot of exposure to Van Briggle over the years, and I kept reminding people on our board that we ought to do an exhibit about Van Briggle because there is a Manitou connection. This is Fred Wills as a younger man in the background there with his big white vase. He was known for throwing some of the largest vessels at the very start of the display is a piece that we attribute to Artis himself. It was produced during that time frame that he was alive. And then you'll see that piece that we attribute to him has the dragonfly on it. I'm a former co-president of Women's Educational Society. The mission is threefold, bringing the women of the community into Colorado College to help do projects, sponsor projects that will help students and to focus on issues especially for women. This building was put in National Register not because we needed funds to do restoration work on it, but rather because it was 100 years old and and we thought it would be a, a great 100-year birthday present for the building to put on the National Register. The Pioneers Museum dates to 1896 and is dedicated to building a lasting connection to the Pikes Peak region by preserving and sharing our cultural history. Van Briggle is a, a major contribution to the cultural history of the Pikes Peak region and is an important part of our story.